This tutorial is going to cover um, how to make the kite block, which has a couple of techniques. Um, the kite itself is foundation paper pieced, and um, the tail is braided, and um, so we'll show you how to do all of that. Um, the first thing that we need to do is consider our fabrics. Notice the um, the background fabric on this is directional, so it would be better if you did not use a directional fabric for your first attempt at foundational at, uh, fa uh, foundation uh, paper piecing, because it can get a little tricky because you're sewing things from the reverse side. But um, but we're going to do a small block. There's actually the small kite block is only here, and it goes to here, across to here, up this seam. And so this is actually the block that we're going to make, foundation paper piece. And then we're going to piece in and build up the rest of the block to this finished size that we need, which is uh, 12 and a half by 18. Um, so it's okay to use directional here. I should have used it right in here, but I didn't on this block, but, um, but it's okay. It all works out in the end. And, um, so anyway, I'm going to come over here. This is what the, um, the kite looks like the, um, pattern for it. And then notice when I put it on near the block that I made, what do you notice about it? One is that our kite is going, um, to the top right and this kite is facing to the top left and that's actually what happens when your foundation paper piece um, is you have you're going to sew the fabric to the back of the paper so if you can see the kite pattern and the light here and we turn it this way and lay it over our kite um, that's actually how it goes and I will fold the paper and show you so you can see the lines a little bit better so we're going to invert that and um, and so the fabrics on so it'll be opposite of what your eye is seeing from the front also I'm going to pick out my fabrics I picked out a few that I thought might work in the kite from my scrap bin and um, but you can pick whatever you've been using for your um, block of the month quilt so that it all works well together. But these are some fabrics and I, I try to lay like the darks opposite, um, but, but they'll work any way you can. This is really a fun block and there's not really much you have to worry about. So um, let me just begin to show you how to prepare the pattern for um, paper piecing. Okay, so for foundation paper piecing, there are papers that you can purchase just for this technique that are, are a little lighter in weight and um, people like to print their pattern on them and use them. I um, just use regular photocopy paper and um, the reason they use special paper is because after you're done stitching all the fabric to the back of the paper, you have to tear it away. But I find that it's very easy to tear away um, once I, I'm going to actually make a crease on all the heavy black lines here. Not on the outside cutting line, but just on the heavy black stitching lines. I'm going to crease it back and forth and back and forth. And um, I like that te technique better. You wouldn't have to do that if you use... Um, paper piecing paper, but I like doing this because it helps me to see where all the lines are on the back side, where all the creases are, and I'm, I know that I've got my fabric placed in the right place. So I'm going to go ahead and start to do that. I'm going to just go right on the black line here. Just like that, and I'm going to fold it forward and back and forward and back again and just make sure it's a nice crease and then um, once it's 
has a good crease in it, once I stitch over it with a small stitch setting, um, it actually perforates the paper and then it tears away very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and finish folding all of this. It'll take me a second. Okay, so I went ahead and separated the two sections of the pattern since we're going to only work on one at a time. Um, I also um, I went ahead and folded and creased um, all the sections so you can see they'll fold uh, very easily. And um, it's hard to see when you flip it over, but in person you would be able to see the creases fairly easily where all your stitching lines are, but I went ahead and penciled them in for the um, purpose of the video so that you can see them. So, um, and I also, what I did is when I laid out my fabrics, I figured out where I wanted to put each fabric and I labeled them on the section numbers so that when I flip it over, I don't get confused. So that's really helpful too. Um, again, I recommend that you don't have a direction for your fabric, but if you do, um, it's sometimes I'll write, draw like a direction line, like I want it to go up and down like that, or I want it to go crossways. So I'll do the gold kind of up and down again, because um, there is a little bit of pattern in, in my gold. But anyway, um, we're gonna begin, when we begin sewing the pieces, um, let's see, I'm gonna start with, we're gonna start with our A1, which is our background piece. And um, let's see if that will go. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me just cut this. Let's see where that will go. will go straight up. Yeah. just going to cut this in two pieces so I have another one for here. So the first piece of fabric that we lay, again, this is, we turn the pattern over. So this is the back of the pattern. And the very first piece of fabric on any section that we start with is going to be face up. And we're going to actually do wrong side of fabric to the wrong side of the pattern. And I'm just going to lay it in such a way that I know that all of my um, corners, so down here is the bottom of the corner, that I have at least a quarter inch beyond. And here is a top corner right here. And I'm gonna lift this up and peek. And here's another corner right here. So I'm gonna just tilt this a little bit to make sure I've got a quarter inch beyond every corner. So here's my two corners on top, and the one on the bottom is right here. So I'm gonna pin it, I'm gonna put a pin right in that to hold that because it, we don't have to stitch that yet. Um, then I'm gonna flip it over. And as we can see, what, a helpful thing also is to have, um, I don't know if that's too much light, but if I hold it up to the light, you can see that the pattern line, um, the fabric covers that whole A1 section triangle. And that's what we want. So I'm gonna, place that down. Now we're going to fold the rest of the pattern that we're not working on yet back. And we know that the fabric is completely under the whole A1 section. I'm going to take my um, add a quarter ruler, which we already talked about. It has a little lip on here. This little lip grips, I, I can just push it right up against the fold. You know what, let me put another, hang on one second, let me just put two pins on this so it doesn't shift when I do that. But um, again, we're going to flip this back. And this little lip on the add a quarter will grab that fold. And I'm going to go ahead and trim the entire length of the ruler. You can always trim the entire length. You don't ever have to... Um, be afraid of cutting off too much at the ends. So now I have a nice quarter inch seam allowance for where I'm going to stitch, which is going to be right on the fold. Now the second piece of fabric is my A2 piece. It's the gold. So here I have the gold 
and I'm going to place that again I have a little grain line because I wanted to make it kind of go up and down but if you don't care that doesn't matter um, so I'm going to place this I'm going to fold it again just like that just like we had it and I'm going to like I said every other the first piece is face up but every other piece is going to actually go face down as we lay each of the other three pieces. And that'll be true on every foundation paper piecing. You start with the first piece is face up and every other piece that's added on will be placed face down. So to do that, I'm going to fold this back under and I'm going to slip my gold underneath. And notice that I'm going to lay the ruler here. This is my up and right direction for the gold and I put a, a, an up and down direction arrow here so that I can lay that nicely. So what I want to make sure I'm doing um, is, oops, I just said, I want to lay this right side up so that if I lift this up I'm going to be sewing right sides together here, okay? Um, and I, the next thing I want to make sure is I've folded um, this gold A2 section back and I'm going to put my finger on the three corners and I want to make sure that the fabric extends at least a quarter inch beyond every point and it does. Okay, so we leave this folded back when we're placing our fabric. Um, I'm going to eventually trim this even with the first piece that we lay down. But first, I'm going to stitch along the fold here. And to do that, I'm going to hold it down with my fingers. I'm going to flip this open. I'm going to put a couple pins in here. Get a bigger pin. Shift it a little bit. Okay. to make sure I don't shift anything while I do this and I'm going to reach in and pull out the pin holding the first piece just so it's not too bumpy when I sew. Okay. So make sure get this shifted a little bit. There we go. Okay. okay. So now I'm going to take it over to the machine and we're going to sew that first seam. Okay, so here we are at the machine. Again, remember I said we want your stitch length, which um, my stitch length is right here. And you want it to be about a one or one and a quarter. Um, we want the stitches tiny. So you really don't want to make a mistake and have to rip this out because it's not fun. Um, but we just set the needle down right into the vertex of that first point and let me see if I can set this down and show you and we're just going to begin to sew on that line I'm going to back this up a little bit get the needle exactly you do not have to go um, you do not have to back tack and you don't have to sew beyond the, the point I'm just going to sew right on this first seam line there you go. I'm going to slip this pin out. Bring it over to the iron. First of all, we're going to fold it back along our stitch line and we're going to trim our quarter inch. We're going to let this be a quarter inch from the folded paper seam. I'm going to cut the rest off. We don't need that anymore, that scrap. And now when we open this up, 
we've got a very precise seam and we're going to give this a little press. You can finger press it if you don't have a little iron uh, handy. Okay, so that's the first piece. Um, and eventually it's going to look, when we finish it, it's going to look like this. We're going to trim it all around and that's what it's going to look like. Um, but we haven't added those pieces yet and finished trimming it. So now we're going to do this whole section together. Otherwise you might not be able to finish it, but we're going to repeat the same steps we did. This, we've already sewn this seam. So now we're going to move to this seam and we have our background fabric here. We have our gold we've added. Now I'm going to add the red fabric that I picked. So I'm going to fold it back along that seam and I'm going to go ahead and trim the gold back just so we know where we're placing the red fabric. We'll get that extra out of the way and it will help us to visualize this is going to be the seam allowance for the red. So um, you can fussy cut, you can place this wherever you want. Um, I, I don't really care so I'm just going to put this under. I'm going to go ahead and line this up. You don't have to line it up. It can be extra. It, you can fussy cut it any way you want. But um, I can line it up. I have enough fabric here. And it just kind of shows you um, we're going to be sewing right along where this fold is. We're going to open it up and sew. So it, you can see um, what we're doing. But the most important thing, again, is we're going to be sewing this A3 section. And so I'm going to put my hand, we have to make sure the fab, the red fabric goes at least a quarter inch beyond the bottom point of the triangle, a quarter inch beyond the top point, which it does, and a quarter inch beyond this other top point, which it does. So once that's in place, um, I'm just going to slip it over and just give us a little wiggle room there. But once that's in place, I'm going to flip it over, throw a couple pins in it, and just to keep it. And we'll bring it back to the machine. Okay. So here we are back at the machine to add the red piece. We're gonna, again, you don't have to back back, you just start at the vertex of the line. I'm gonna pull out the pin. With such a tiny stitch length, I don't like to sew over the pins, although some people do. Okay, so this is um, this is what we just sewed. Okay, and when I flip it over, that's what it looks like. We're gonna open it up and press it like that. But first, we're gonna flip it so the pattern is right side up. We're gonna fold over where our stitch line is. We're gonna take our add a quarter ruler, and we're gonna trim all the fabrics to be a quarter inch seam allowance, nice and neat. And then. We're going to open it up. We're going to open it up from the back. We're going to press it. And that's what we have so far. Again, this is what it's going to look like once we've finished sewing and got it all trimmed up. But um, we still have one more um, piece, the other neutral piece. That's going to go on the other side. Oh no, this is. So I guess this will be my background. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to flip this over, and we've done this seam, this seam, and now we have this seam to do. Okay, we're going to fold this over. I'm going to use my add a quarter and get rid of the extra red fabric that we don't need in this block. And now I know I'm going to place the neutral fabric here. Again, we just want to make sure that the neutral fabric extends 
a quarter inch beyond the bottom point, a quarter inch beyond the top two points, and it does. You can fold this back and see clearly we've got plenty of fabric in place. And we'll go ahead and put a couple pins in there to hold it. I would do recommend two pins, otherwise it'll shift vertically on you. And, um, Okay, so this is the seam that I just sewed on the machine, and um, if we fold it over, we're going to, again, use our add a quarter, um, right along the fold of the paper, which is also the seam line. We're going to trim off any extra, and now that is, is trimmed, we're going to open this up on the back and give that a press. And that's what it looks like. As you can see, we have very precise, straight seams. And um, what we need to do now is go ahead and trim um, around the seam allowance of the rest of the, oops, there's not a sharp blade in here for some reason. I just hit something. Again, where these overlapped, it didn't quite leave us a full quarter inch on the paper, but that's okay. We can leave it on the fabric. So. Little top edges. So that is the first pattern piece, and you can see it's all um, put together. Um, let me go ahead and show you. We'll do the next piece. Um, B1 is the green. I selected this green for it, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and, again, we're going to turn our pattern uh, face down, and I'm going to place the green uh, face up and make sure all the points of the green are um, under this, and they are. You can put a pin in it. Oh, I'm sorry, here's the green on this side. Um, yeah, I should have mentioned before too, I don't know if I did. When I creased it, I put the pencil lines of the crease in. You may do that if you want. You'll be able to see your crease lines just fine, but, um, but you can also draw them in. It makes no difference. It's just helpful to see where you're lining up your fabric and to make sure the fabric is extending beyond all the points of what you're trying to, to cover. Um, and also, I labeled which fabrics go where because when you flip it over, um, like I just did, my it says green over here. When I flipped it over, I put green here and I realized, oh, good thing I wrote it in there because I had to switch it to the side. So everything's in reverse, and that gets a little confusing, and I think sometimes that drives people uh, to some frustration with this technique. So I like to label it, and it helps um, you to follow along as I'm demonstrating it as well. Um, let me go ahead and get my next piece, and we'll, sh we'll sew that. Where we left off, just gonna make, sure, make sure your pieces are fairly well ironed too. Um, Here's my green, and again, I'm going to fold this back. This is my stitching line. I'm going to place my next piece with the right sides together when we sew. And I want to make sure that the blue extends a quarter inch beyond this. And it does barely. I'm just going to shift this up a little. And actually, I'm going to put my finger here. As you can see, um, I barely have enough blue sticking out, so I do have to shift it over a little bit to make sure that I have plenty of room. I can lift, I can go up too. So here's where the blue has to extend a quarter inch beyond that point, and it does. It has to extend a quarter inch beyond there, and a quarter inch beyond there, and it does. So we're ready to pin this in place. Um, 
Again, I always suggest two pins, one at the top and the bottom, otherwise it does shift at the machine by the time you pick it up and stitch it. So I'm gonna go sew this real quick. So here I've just stitched this seam. There's only one seam on this to sew these two pieces together. So that top portion, the V section was very easy. I'm gonna fold it back, it's already stitched in place. Use my add a quarter and we're going to run that right along at a quarter inch right up to the stitching line, trim away the extra fabric, and I can open this up and I can open this up, and we'll give it a press. And now we're gonna just go ahead and um, you can't really see the the quarter inch. I think I sewed this one wrong. The quarter inch seam allowance on this side. So, but we're just gonna go ahead and trim all this away to a quarter inch from our stitching line. So here are the two pieces for the block, and um, what we're going to do next is they both have paper on the background. Let me just flip. Okay, this has a quarter inch. This one. Let me just. I didn't do the quarter inch on this one side. There we go. Okay, so here's our are two block pieces, the top and bottom of the kite. So what we're gonna do is flip them over, and this is where all that paper folding comes into play because we're just gonna tear this away. Like I said, this, between the folding and the stitching, it weakens that seam and it just tears away very easily. So we'll go ahead and you don't need to save this for anything, I just throw it in the trash. Um, obviously, if you wanted to make more than one of these blocks, you'd have to have a photocopy um, of the pattern for each block that you want it to make and you'd have to fold and label each one so all of this can be thrown away now we're done with that and we already know that we've left ourselves a quarter inch seam allowance so we'll nest our seams here and sew this together and um, that'll be our completed kite block and I'll show you in a minute how we get it up to full speed so now we're ready to sew the two sections, A and B, together along that middle seam line. I just pinned the and nested the two seams, so one's going to the left and one's going to the right, so they'll lay nice and flat. And we're just gonna sew a quarter inch. Notice that um, right at the vertex of where these two fabrics intersect, that's gonna be a quarter inch, and that's where I'm gonna begin sewing. Straight across, and I'm gonna end right there again. That's really important for it to line up correctly, and, your edges to be nice and straight. Okay, so here is our um, finished foundation paper pieced block. And um, this is what it looks like. Notice how precise the corners are, the lines meet up, the size, everything just comes out so nicely. And every time you make this block, it would be very precise and exactly the same size. So it's really a fun technique to learn for um, blocks where precision really, uh, really counts. Um, and also notice that there's a little bit extending here. This will be our quarter inch seam allowance, so this will come right up to the point here and also right here as we sew our, our seam allowance here, this will come right to a perfect point and the same at the bottom here. Um, so now this block finishes about six and a quarter inches by six and a quarter with the seam allowances um, after we've trimmed it up and removed the paper off the back. So we need a finished block of 12 and a half by 12 and a half wide by 18 and a half inches long so it fits into the rest of our quilt. So we're going to build up this block 
with the background fabrics. And the way I've done that is first I just kind of sketched out a pattern here. Um, so you can see we're going to, the finished size is 12 and a half inches across and it's going to be 18 and a half inches long. I placed the kite block roughly in the center and um, I've cut some extra pieces here. So my A piece is going to be about four and a half inches high and 14 inches wide. Again, I've given myself an extra inch and a half just to be able to trim everything nice and even. And then piece B is going to be this size. It's going to be six and a half inches high by four and a half wide. C is going to be six and a half high as well by four and a half wide. And then the bottom piece that will fit in our D piece will be 10 inches um, high by 14 inches wide again. And so let me put that aside a second. Here's our kite block. Here is our A piece that I've already cut. Um, here is our one of the B, the B piece. Here is a C. And here is, oops, let me straighten this out. Okay, and so there is a little bit of how that block is going to be sewn together. What I'll do first is sew these two seams together and press them, trim the edges so they're straight, and then I'll sew the top on and the bottom on, and we'll trim it all to 18 and a half inches. Okay, so here is the finished um, block as far as all the piecing goes. Sorry if I turn that around. Um, I just wanted you to see it's 12 and a half by 18 and a half inches. And um, it doesn't really matter if this is exactly centered or not. I wanted it off centered a little bit. And um, so I, you just want to put the two pieces on the side and then you can slide it back and forth and line up the top and bottom strips as you want to and kind of it gives you some wiggle room. The sizes I gave you for cutting those pieces were all generous. So it gives you a little wiggle room and you should be able to trim some away um, to where you like it. So now we have to put the tail on and um, on the, let me set this down a second. On the finished quilt that I did already, the tail um, is kind of a twisted braided strips of fabric and um, it's just kind of placed randomly and tacked down. So um, let me show you how I do that. Um, hang on a second. <laughs> um, you can see uh, close up. And I just actually ripped the strips so that, um, let's see here. I ripped, um, two strips of, of fabric here, um, about an inch and a half wide. It doesn't really matter. An inch to an inch and a half is fine. Um, I like it a little raggedy and I picked this one to kind of go with it. It doesn't really matter. I think these would be fun colors for a kite tail with, um, with my quilt. So what we're going to do to get started, let me see if I can show you, is we're going to, um, I'm going to pin these two. I'll grab a pin. Um, I'm going to pin these two together. And I'm going to stick it in my quilt just to anchor it. Um, let me see if we can show you that. Okay, so I've kind of anchored it in the quilt just to show you. And we're going to start with... Um, Twisting, I'm just going to keep twisting one here. Let's see if I can do this and hold the camera at the same time. And you can sit and watch television. A lot of people like to make these um, I'm just going to keep twisting here. Let's see the best angle so you can. Whoop. So you can see it. Um, let me keep twisting so it's 
a pretty tight twist and it begins to curl in on itself. There we go. And see, it's starting to curl in on itself. That's, that's what we want when it curls in like that. Okay, so I'm going to place something to hold that down, my pin tray. And I'm going to go ahead and now start twisting the other one. Again, you can see this is starting to curl in on itself. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna grab the other one and we're gonna start twisting them together. So that they'll curl or one around the other. And, um, and they'll stay together because they're twisted in opposite directions. So that is how we do it. There's no sewing involved. It's just rolling and twisting. And that is how we twist that braid for um, the kite tail and the string. So I'm going to take it out and let's bring it over here. You can just kind of lay it down. And um, I just took a little, I did a zigzag stitch with a zero length. So it would just tack um, back and forth, back and forth in the same place. And I just tacked it about every inch or so um, along the kite tail and let it um, kind of swirl around. You can leave the ends a little bit loose if you want. But yeah, if you look close, um, it's, it's really hard to see, but you can see the little tacking points. But it's nice and secure. And I should say that um, I waited until after my quilt was quilted before I attached this and I tacked through the entire three layer quilt at the time and you really can't see on the other side. The other thing I did was these little ties and again I just took a strip of fabric. Um, I like to, to rip it because I kind of like the ragged edges and just pull away the strings and then just tie it in a little knot. I probably made that too short. But anyway, you can just take a strip of fabric, tie it in a little knot. You have your bow and um, let's see here. Yeah. I should have left it a little bit longer, but anyway, just tie it in a knot and you can open it up better than this is a little too short, but, and then the bows just get tacked on and they get tacked on after the, the block is in the quilt and finished as well. But that's, that's how you do it.